Right, I've got this uh, 1930 BSA 350 Model L crankshaft back together now. Now we've seen that the big end is good and I've trued it up and obviously I've got the, um, I did my work on the loose time inside shaft as well, that's uh, secure again. And I've got both clocks reading in thousandths of an inch, both on zero there at the moment. We've got 0 to 10 on the scale on that one and 0 to 5 on that one. And I'll just rotate the crank now and you'll see perhaps it won't be the best I've ever achieved. But in view of what I've been working with, I'm going to take it as a win. We're clocking about four thousandths of an inch run out on that one. And we're getting about three, three and a half thousandths of an inch on this one. But crucially, they're rising and falling together. So the rise and fall, their rises and falls are at the same points of rotation. So um, to a large degree, they cancel each other out. So in real terms, we've probably got less than two thousandth of an inch run out there once those shafts are supported in main bearings. So um, I'm more than happy with that when we consider and bear in mind what we started with. I know I didn't even get to set it up between centres to measure any run out, but that uh, time inside shaft was really loose and wobbling about all over the place. So I re-riveted it and I've put some uh, very strong sort of bearing fitting compound in there to soak in and I heated it as I sort of applied it so it will have gone into any sort of spaces hopefully where the shaft might have been wiggling about previously and help uh, take up a clearance and support the, the main shaft and it's very very strong stuff I've used it before and tried to get it get components apart after using it and it was an absolute nightmare so I'm pretty happy with this and I think this is good to go subject to uh, decent main bearings. 